Hello friends, I am back with another bookish video for you. If you've been following this channel for a while, you know that I love a good little free library as much as the next person. And I find a lot of great books in the little free libraries that we have throughout Portland. Portland is such a great book city. We've got great bookstores, we've got a lot of writers, we've got just like bookish culture and so many great little free libraries. In addition to finding books in little free libraries, I have recently been finding abandoned books. Books in boxes on the street, books just randomly lying on the sidewalk, and you know I can't say no to a sad book that needs a new home. So in this video I'm going to share with you all of the abandoned books I've found this summer. First up, books one and two in the Amulet graphic novel series. These were in a box on the sidewalk asking me to take them home. This is a fantasy graphic novel series about a young girl who finds herself in a new home after her father dies. And this new home, there's like a weird inventor who used to live there and she gets wrapped up in this kind of magic world. I read the first book. It was pretty fun, a great adventure. I have not dipped into the second book yet. But it seems like a pretty fun series for young readers. In that same box, I also found Vision by Dean Koontz. And this is just a fabulous edition that was too good to pass up, you know? I mean, how can you say no to that? You can't. I've read a couple of Dean Koontz books in my life, but haven't really read any recently. This one came out in 1977. And I guess it's about a woman who has like psychic abilities and is connected with a killer in her mind and is trying to help the police find that killer. I haven't decided yet if I want to read it. I just loved the edition that I found and I couldn't leave it on the street. Now during one of my little free library videos, you may have seen me pick up The Request by David Bell. This was sitting on a bridge waiting for me to bike by. I snatched it up. It looked like a great book. I have read this one. It was only so-so. It was a pretty fun read, a page turner about a man who has a dark secret past that comes back to haunt him. And I think also at the end, you know, no spoilers, but at the end they all decided to delete their Facebook accounts because social media is the devil. <laughs> This one I'm going to be sending back out into the world. I'm going to drop it off at a little free library and hopefully somebody else will get some enjoyment out of it. That's the best part about free books. There's no guilt in giving them away when you don't want to keep them. These next two I found next to a dumpster. Not in a dumpster. I haven't quite gotten into the dumpster diving for books yet, though that might be next. And if I do that, I will make sure to record it so you guys can all watch. These two were sitting next to the dumpster and I couldn't let them end up in the dump. Pure by Juliana Baggett and The Girl from Savoy by Hazel Gaynor. Two very different books. Pure is, I believe, let's see, the back description says, after the detonations, the world was unrecognizable. A dystopian post-apocalyptic book. And then I guess the main character is either going to be a soldier or used for target practice, but then she decides to run from that life. And so I guess it's about two people running from their destinies or maybe trying to find new ones. But I mean, this sounds like it could be a pretty cool book, so. And it definitely doesn't deserve to be in the trash. The Girl from Savoy is a historical fiction novel. It's set in London in 1923 set against the backdrop of the rich and famous and the glittery social scene of London. It tells the story of two women who are on very different sides of the social circle and how their lives collide. I think this cover is gorgeous. These two were together in a box, some Charlene Harris books, Midnight Crossroad and Night Shift. This is book one and book three in the Midnight Texas series. And I was a little disappointed that there wasn't book two because now I feel like I'm gonna have to go out and find book two to complete the set so I can read it through. The description says, Midnight Texas is a sleepy southern town whose strange and secretive residents must unite to prevent all hell from breaking loose. We all know Charlene Harris is a great storyteller. These books sound like they could be a lot of fun. Confession, I don't think I've actually read anything by Charlene Harris. I tried reading book one in the Suki Stackhouse series and really couldn't get through it. But this series might be more my style, so we'll see if it's a good fit. I haven't 
cracked them open yet. I haven't started reading, but they can sit on my shelf a while till I get to them. The other day I was walking Charlie and there was this very large box in front of somebody's house and there were a lot of books in this box and I wanted to take the whole box home, but had to have some self-control. So I pawed through it to see what I could find. There was a lot of cozy mysteries and a lot of paranormal cozies. So I picked out three that looked fun to me. One is a Maisie Dobbs novel, The Mapping of Love and Death. I'm not sure what number this is in the series. Maybe six or seven. I have another one on my shelf, Among the Mad. And I've read the first one and enjoyed it, but um, it wasn't my favorite, but I was interested enough in Maisie as a character to kind of read more and see if she grew as a character. So I'm looking forward to tucking back in with her at some point whenever I'm feeling the need to go back in time and have a little cozy mystery. And even if I don't ever get to it, this is a great book to like deliver to one of my little free libraries. I know there are a lot of readers out there who love Maisie Dobbs and it would be a treasure to find this in a little free library. In that same box, I picked out two kind of silly cozy mysteries. You can't really see it because there's like library stickers on it. But this one is Lemon Pie, Lemon Pies? Lemon Pies and Little White Lies. I love that title. This one is Biscuits and Slashed Browns. You don't really get better than that. There's a cute little cat. So these are just kind of uh, typical cozy mysteries set in a small town. There is food involved, quirky characters involved, murder. They are both part of a series. I don't know whether they're number one or number five. Usually with these kinds of cozies, you can dive in anywhere and still enjoy the story. So whenever I'm looking for something a little bit on the lighter side, I'm gonna grab one of these. The final abandoned book that I have found this summer it was kind of a strange find. Again, it was in a box of other books just sitting on the sidewalk. This box was full of like classic Russian literature, like Dostoevsky, Nabokov. I think there was like a Karl Marx book in there, just like very dense, thick, big books. I'm not super interested in that kind of stuff right now, but at the bottom of all of these, there was this pink, book. <laughs> and I think it was Love at First Sight. I knew I had to have it. I'd never heard of this book. It's called The Merciless by Daniel Vega. There's a pentagram on the front which tells you something, a little something about it. And then the back it says, forgive us father for we have sinned. Not much else. Luckily on the inside there was a description about the book with some blurbs from like Kirkus and Booklist and that kind of thing. Here's my favorite. This pulse pounding debut novel creates a wickedly creepy atmosphere where mean girls quickly turn homicidal. Sounds good. Sounds like the perfect spooky season read if you ask me. So I think it's about a high school student, Brooklyn Stevens, who, um, I don't know, her friends think she's possessed by the devil or something. It was a hot pink book in a box full of Dostoevsky. I had to rescue it. I had to. I think I'm gonna put it on my spooky read stack that I'm getting together. And don't worry, I will share that stack with you later on, probably at the end of this month or the beginning of October. So don't worry, you'll get a spooky reads video soon. Okay, so that is the stack of free books that I have found this summer, just on the side of the road, next to dumpsters, in boxes, people discarding books they no longer want to read. I'm either going to read these or put them in little free libraries. The thing with finding the free books is that they're out in the elements. They're not in a little free library tucked away safe undercover. And while in the summer that's fine, here in Portland. It rains a lot during the fall and winter and I was afraid for them. I didn't want them to get soaking wet and unreadable. So I brought them home temporarily or perhaps forever. But for right now, I want you to tell me one of two things. One, have you ever abandoned a book on the side of the road, in a hotel room, on a park bench, in an airport? If you have, tell me what book you abandoned and then question number two, have you ever picked up an abandoned book from any of those places? And if yes, tell me which ones you picked up. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.